Good afternoon. Today we're starting a unit on measurement. Measurement is how we determine the area of two-dimensional objects. To start, the first lesson that we're going to cover today, we're just looking at area formulas that you, you have probably seen in the past at some point, with the exception maybe of the rhombi and kites, but hopefully you've seen uh, area formulas for triangles, squares, trapezoids, rectangles, parallelograms, all of those before. So some of this will be review. But we're also going to fold in some of the, our prior knowledge from Unit 7 and 8, um, information about 30, 60, 90 special right triangles, Pythagorean theorem, and fun stuff like that. So let's get started. I'm just going to talk through some of these a little bit quickly because they're pretty basic. You should be familiar with them. If not, feel free to stop the video at any time and work the problems alongside me. Example one asks us to find the area of a square. So I went ahead and drew a square, because you know me, I like pictures. I remember that in the square, all sides are congruent and all angles are 90 degrees. This particular problem gives me the perimeter. I know there are four sides and perimeter is always the sum of all the sides. So four times the number of sides equals 48. I solve for this length of each side, which is 12. And then I use the standard formula that you're very familiar with, side squared and I come up with an area of 144 units. Remember that when we are expressing area, we always label with our units, and because it's a two-dimensional object, our units will be square. If we move on and look at the next formula, again, one that you hopefully are familiar with, the area of a rectangle can be found by taking the base times the height. Move this up a touch. In this particular case, we are given a rectangle, but it doesn't explicitly give us the length of the base. It does give us a height. Remember, base and height are, um, it can be swapped. It doesn't have to be how tall it is. They're just the two sides of a rectangle. Rectangles, 90 degree angles, and opposite sides are congruent. In this case, we're given the length of the diagonal, but because this is a right angle, I can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the leg of the triangle, and in doing so, I am able to come up with um, a base of eight units. And then I just substitute into my area formula, area of the base times height, should come out to 32 units squared. Well, now that we're going with some familiar, um, some familiar formulas, let's use them in some different ways. Um, actually, no, we're gonna do a parallelogram next. See, this is what happens when you cover up what's coming ahead. Um, when I look at the area of a parallelogram, it is just like uh, the area of a rectangle. Hopefully you did an experiment when you were in middle school where you um, basically chopped off one end of the parallelogram. And if you slide it over here, you'll see that it makes a rectangle, which is pretty cool. The formula is the same as a rectangle. But notice in this case, while I did give you the base, I did not give you the height. Instead, I gave you this slanted part, which cannot be used to height. So what I'm gonna have to do in this case is I'm gonna have to recognize that this is a 60-90 right triangle. And I drew it over here because you know me, I like pictures. When I recognize this is a 30-60-90 special right triangle, I see that there is a relationship between that slant side of the right, or the hypotenuse of the right triangle, the short leg, and the long leg. So I should be able to find my height by solving this little equation. So I don't know why I wrote that there. I'm gonna take this one, 12 equals two X. So the short leg of this right triangle is six. And that means that the height of my, trap, of my parallelogram should be six square root three units. Once I know what height is, I can substitute that into my formula. And I know that my base is 15. And I've now calculated that my height is six square root three. So I have enough information now to solve for my area. And when I multiply these, I end up with checking my notes here. I think I did this wrong because this is across from the 30 degree angle. See, it helps to go back and check. This is your square root three. So my height is actually just six. I don't know why I had that there. Good grief, y'all. It's early in the lesson and I'm already screwing it up. 
I'm sure some of y'all caught that. Okay, across from the 30 degree angle is x, across from the 60 degree angle is x square root three. My height is six, my area is 90 units squared. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, let's see if we can do something that Ms. Palmer actually knows how to do. Let's look at triangles. You have probably learned that the formula for a triangle is one half the base times the height. Remember the base goes all the way across one side of your triangle and the height is at its perpendicular from a vertex to that base. Uh, we have a picture. We love pictures. I noticed first off that this is an equilateral triangle, which means all of my sides are going to be eight in length. That's that my base, wherever it happens to be, or wherever I happen to draw it, is going to be eight. I went ahead and dropped an altitude because that is the height of my triangle. It goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the base. Because equilateral, I have 30, 60, 90 special right triangles. So I drew that triangle over here. I got it right this time. Across from my 60 degree angle is x square root. That will be the height. I was given the side of uh, the hypotenuse of this right triangle as 8, which is equal to 2x. So if I solve this, 8 is the hypotenuse. That means the short leg of this triangle is 4, and my height will be 4 square root 3. So I'm just going to write this down, you know. And I have enough information to actually find the area. My area is going to be 1 half the base, which we said was eight, because all sides are equal, and my height was four square root three. You can do this calculation any way you choose. What you should end up with is 16 square root three units for your area. And I'm gonna remember that it's units squared because we're talking about a two-dimensional object. I did better on that one. All right. Let's see what comes next. Next is a rhombus. I doubt that you've ever seen the formula for a rhombus, but perhaps you have. Um, the area formula for a rhombus is one half the first diagonal times the second diagonal, D1 times D2. These are the lengths of our diagonal. Let's do a quick review. When you're looking at a rhombus, remember that the diagonals of the rhombus are perpendicular, creating right triangles. The diagonals are also, also bisect each other. So if this segment is three, then I can surmise that this segment is also three. So I can find the length of one of my diagonals, but I don't have enough information to find the length of the second diagonal. First things first, the length of the first diagonal is gonna be three plus three, which is six units. And I don't know the length of the second diagonal but I do have a right triangle, so I can use Pythagorean theorem. Three squared plus the side I don't know, B squared equals five squared, which is the hypotenuse across from the right angle. I solve, and I end up with a side it, of this right triangle as being four. So if this half of the diagonal is four, then this one is also four, making my total diagonal eight units. So now I have enough information that I can actually find my area. My area is going to be one half my first diagonal, which we said was six, times my second diagonal, which we calculated as being eight. Half of six is three, three times eight is 24. So my area for this rhombus is 24 units squared. Pretty cool, huh? Only a couple more. The next one we're going to look at is the area of a kite. You'll notice that the area of the kite formula is exactly the same as the area of a rhombus. One half diagonal one times diagonal two. Some things about kites. Remember that in a kite the diagonals are perpendicular and the consecutive sides are congruent but opposite sides are not congruent. In this particular example they gave us all the information we need. Diagonal two or diagonal one, it really doesn't matter. One of my diagonals is 14 units. And I labeled it differently here than I did here. 
you got to wonder where my brain is sometimes. And then my other diagonal, we'll make this into a capital one. My other diagonal is going to be the sum of these two because I'm going from one vertex to the opposite. So in this case, that would be six. So if I want to, sub, to uh, substitute in what I know, I'm going to do half of 14. Have to look at my numbers. Times six. Half of six is three. Three times 14 is going to give me 42. You could also do half of 14 is seven. One times six is 42. That's how you can use some mental math to make this a little bit faster. So the area of this kite is 42 units square. All right, last one, area of a trapezoid. Turns out trapezoids are so interesting, they have two area formulas. The first is one half the height times the sum of the bases. The second is the median times the height. And if you'll remember, the median can be found by just taking one half of base one plus base two. So really these two formulas are exactly the same. It's just that sometimes I know the median and I don't know the individual bases. Sometimes I know the bases, in which case I could solve for the median or I could go directly to the area. In this particular case, just to give you something that perhaps you haven't seen before, we were given the median and the height. So to find this, the area of this particular trapezoid, I'm just gonna do some real simple substitution. Do 18, I'm gonna multiply this by six, and that ultimately should give me the area of my trapezoid. Comes out to 108. 108 units squared. If I hadn't been given the median, or if I was given one of the bases but not the other, I could use 30, 60, 90 right triangles. If this was a 60 degree angle, I can use Pythagorean theorem because it is a right angle. If I know two of the sides, there's lots I can do here. Also remember that the median of a trapezoid splits the sides into two equal pieces and is perpendicular to one of the bases. That might help with some of the more interesting problems that you're going to face. That's it for today, guys. Hopefully you see that Pythagorean theorem and our 30, 60, 90, 45, 45 special right triangles play an integral role in doing some more of the more sophisticated problems. Thanks.